Today we will be making mushroom specimen cards. These are the ones that I made and we will be making a similar one but with a slightly different touch. So I used gel prints for borders and different um, texture and structure pastes for the mushrooms. I invite you to create with me this mushroom card but it will be slightly different so let's move these out of the way and let's go and of course we will start with the mushroom itself for that I cut several stencils out of ordinary cardstock I cut up a carton box to get the cardboard for my stencils and then I used scissors and cutting knife to cut out mushroom shapes. They do not need to be precise, the, they do not need to resemble real mushrooms because in this project I wanted to step away a little bit from trying to recreate realistic specimens. It is slightly Halloween inspired but just inspired. Uh, in colors you will see that I've used uh, purples and lilacs but my main idea was to create mushrooms which could be real but are not. So for this mushroom I am using um, crackle paste and I really want the mushroom to have dimension so that's why I cut the cardboard stencil and that's why I'm applying the texture paste in a very thick layer and this one is a Fina Bear texture paste. I do not care if the paste bleeds under the stencil. I'm not trying to create a very smooth surface. Uh, au contraire, I'm trying to have the surface very uh, crunchy. And of course, every excess bit of the paste needs to go back in a jar. It's precious. I already made a mushroom tag, and I will link to the video in the description below this video where I used um, very ordinary Liquitex structure paste and it was wonderful because it was old so if you have any leftover paste which is old almost dry it is perfect for this project you will use a lot and the dryness and oldness makes it perfect for this project as it soaks up the paint very well later. I do not have that paste anymore that is why I use Stamperia pastes and uh, Fina Bear pastes. It was also a project for testing out how different pastes behave. What you saw me doing there with the palette knife I slightly rounded up the edges of the paste so that they do not have this sharp edge where the paste met the stencil. While our mushroom is drying, let's create the card itself. I used the ordinary recycled cardboard for the base. I just cut it several centimeters bigger on all sides than my black mushroom card. No very exact measuring here. And I want the frame to be a little bit raised. As you know, usually I would use a foam sheet to cut the raised part, but this one I want it to be raised even more than a foam sheet would allow me. So I used ordinary pieces of cardboard. And these are the prints that I made using gel plate. I will link to the video below. And I made them specifically for this project as I wanted to make frames out of gel prints. And for this mushroom I chose the golden colored print which actually inspired the color scheme for the mushroom itself. As you can see, it didn't cut it very precisely, <laughs> but I did cut precisely the inner rectangle using cutting dies. They are usually used for card making, but the very basic sets like these are very good for mixed media projects too. And I'm using a black acrylic marker to go around the frame to hide some scenes and to hide the white edges of the paper. Let's put that aside for a moment and let's go back to our mushroom and as you see the crackle paste has dried and crackled beautifully. So I like how this paste crackles. Even though I put the paste in a very thick layer, the crackles are tiny and small. 
for example, for this mushroom, I used um, heavy body paste also by Stamperia, not crackle paste. And the surface is very, very smooth. I cannot say that I don't like it, but I do prefer the crackled surface better. And this one, <laughs> this one was interesting. I am still on the edge <laughs> if I like it or not. <laughs> but for this mushroom, I used um, uh, also Stamperia's crackle paste, but transparent paste, and it behaved totally differently from the ordinary crackle paste. The crackle pieces, as you see, are very big. So basically, the whole mushroom crackled in like six seven pieces and that's it <laughs> so I'm really not sure if I like it and the crackle paste shrank the paper shrank the black background paper so much that I was not able to glue it without um, having creases on the paper so I let the creases there and I accentuated them with white paint and I colored the mushroom, since it was transparent, I colored it with transparent acrylic paints, hoping to keep some transparency. But let's return to our mushroom. I colored it using turquoise ink spray, and I'm gluing the black piece of paper to my background. And now to the fun part, decoration. I am using the art glitter glue to cover the top part of the mushroom and I'm trying to cover it not completely but just the very top part of top surface of the each crackled part I do not want the glue to go into the cracks because I don't want the gold leaf Ta-da! we are using gold leaf to go in between the cracks I want the turquoise color still to be visible the glue needs to dry and that gives me time to glue the frame to the base. And then I realized that I already prepared the background, the backside, but I glued the backside part um, the wrong way. I used this beautiful mushroom poster, vintage looking poster. It is not vintage, I wouldn't cut up a vintage poster but this is a beautiful vintage looking mushroom poster and I didn't want to spend too much time on the back side as the front already involves a lot of work so I just cut up the poster and glued it to the back side please don't tell anyone that I glued this mushroom upside down <laughs> now to the fun part the my favorite part of this mushroom I want the same um, trellis type um, what is it? It's not a decoration, a trellis type part of the mushroom. I think you have seen the pictures of this amazing mushroom in the books. Uh, for that, for the first mushroom, I used a simple trellis die, but since this is a slightly fancier version of that mushroom, I'm using this lacy tip die cut, and I colored it on both sides using the same turquoise ink. I covered the die cut with glycerin because I want slightly grungier look. I used a brush which gives me an uneven coating and then the golden embossing power. And let's just for a second pause and enjoy the melting embossing powder. Oh, one of my favorite things to do, melt the embossing powder. <laughs> so back to the mushroom, the glue is dry and I'm using a brush to brush away the excess gold leaf. I am going in with the brush quite energetically because I want the gold leaf to be a little bit scratched, a little bit crunchy to fit with the rest of the card especially paying attention to clean out the gold leaf from the cracks of the hat of the mushroom. Then I will blow off the little speckles of gold leaf and we are ready for the next stage, putting on the trellis, the skirt of the mushroom. I remember the skirt of the mushroom, yes! <laughs> 
I'm gluing the top part together, sort of folding it on itself to create the rounded shape for the skirt. I'm using the Art Glitter Glue. It's a wonderful glue which dries invisible and dries quickly. It's perfect to glue together small intricate details like this. And then the skirt needs to go on the mushroom and I'm using the same glue again. Probably tacky glue would be even better but Art Glitter Glue manages this task perfectly. And while the glue on the mushroom was drying, that gave me time to work on decorative elements for the frame. And you saw that on the other cards I used little glass jars and filled them with colored alcohol inks to indicate that there is a liquid oozing from the mushrooms, some elixir of the mushrooms. But for this card I filled the little glass jars, jar the right word. Oh with glitter, with gold glitter and since I wanted the glitter to slightly float in the jar I added a couple of drops of the same glycerin that I use for embossing turns out that glycerin is a very useful product let me find the cork and then I will try to show you how the glitter now floats slowly and elegantly in our glass jar The little jar is ready to go on the frame and I will be adding other little decorative elements. The first one will be a label. You know me, no project without labels. And this was a bigger rubber stump which I cut up in small separate labels. And it was a perfect size for this tiny little glass jar. And I'm scrunching it up and I printed it by the way on the off cut of that same mushroom poster because the color of the paper was perfect but I will was while I was doing that uh, I've decided that I'm not very happy with the mushroom itself and I chose to find the only metallic paint that I have it happens to be a watercolor but this is a very good uh, quality Japanese watercolor which means that the gold watercolor is very very saturated and I'm able to use it almost as an acrylic paint and I'm going around the mushroom hat to sort of ground it more to make the border more precise and then I had this thought that I even need to paint the plant in gold color so you tell me is it tacky is it beautiful <laughs> at this stage I don't know anymore but since the gold color is out I'm going for it so I'm adding just a little bit of gold to the dried plant which I previously used to make the prints that you see on the frame and I'm gluing all the elements down in a little cluster in the corner of the frame so the little label, the piece of plant, the piece of golden flower and the little glass jar. For that I will be using tacky glue as I want to make sure that the glass really sticks to the paper. It will become transparent when dry and will not be visible at all. And I'm using the tacky glue also to glue down the paper label and the metal frame. And for the label I stamped the only little handwriting stamp that I could find in my stash. And only later I read that it says little by little one travels far. <laughs> and I found it funny that, you know, mushrooms, uh, mushroom liquid trips traveling, maybe the saying on the label goes well after all with the mushroom <laughs> and <laughs> since the uh, card the frame is too thick for the little brads that hold the frame down to go through i used an owl to poke holes through the frame added a tiny drop of glue into each hole and i'm simply gluing the brads into the hole 
And since I felt that it's missing something, I'm adding a little piece of dried leaf, which I colored using the Rabon paint in gold. Still not sure if this is tacky or not, but I like it. And later I will also glue a catalog tab on top, which I forgot at the moment. Here is the finished golden mushroom specimen card. And I will put the photos of this and all the other cards in my Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe Facebook group. You are very welcome to find us there and join us. Think, was this too much gold? Not enough gold. Let me know and I see you soon in the next episode.